Hello, hello, let's keep this thing going. Welcome back to part nine of the full stack trading app tutorial. Thanks to anyone who's followed along on the website and left a comment. Uh, I promise I'll get back into writing mode uh, shortly. I've only posted the first five parts of the series in written format. I'm recording another five videos this week. I've posted, I believe three of them. And so I'm gonna post a couple more and then I'll go, I'm going to go back into writing mode. And so I'll post the written form tutorials as well uh, within the next week hopefully in the next few days. So uh, please keep following along there. And also thanks to anyone who has donated so far. Um, I wanted to send a special thank you to a donation that just came in. Yang Wu here just bought uh, 10 drinks. He said he appreciates uh, the videos and the fact that I share the time and make them available for everyone. So thank you very much. And thanks for the generous donation. We got some big uh, ballers lately donating 10 and 20, 20 drinks at a time. So I, I really appreciate that. It helps me keep motivated and keeps me going. And I'll include the link if anyone else uh, wants to donate to the cause. All right. So now that that is done, um, let's go ahead and get started with coding. So I wanted to take a quick break from trading strategies and go back to um, adding some features to our full stack web application. And the first thing I wanted to add is email and SMS notifications because that's very common in uh, apps like TradingView, for instance. And so how do we add email and SMS notifications? Well, I'll borrow a couple of lines from this real Python article. Um, this, this code is all over the place. Python has an SMTP uh, library built in. And so there's a few different approaches we could take to a sending email. We could either one, uh, set up our own email server. So we can install uh, Linux packages to set up an email server and host it ourselves, or host it on our own virtual private server that we're going to set up in one of the follow-up videos. Alternatively, we could use a software as a service like uh, SendGrid or Mailgun. And these are examples of email services that we can use and they provide APIs for us to use Python to connect to their email service and send an email. And they add some additional value on top of the basic email functionality. So they'll add like statistics and uh, prevent spam and things like that. And then the third way, which we're going to actually use is since it's very easy and cheap and free to just sign up for a free email account with Gmail, we're going to just use a Gmail account and Gmail actually lets you log into their SMTP server and use your uh, Gmail username and password uh, to log in and send email. And so we're just gonna do uh, that approach because we can get up and running in no time. So uh, let's go ahead and get that going. And so there's a couple snippets we're gonna take from uh, this real Python article. So all we want is we want this line in here and this is what I want to remember. So let's just take this little snippet of code here and you see we want to import SMTP lib and SSL. So we want a secure connection to our email server. And so we'll take this and let's send our email notification inside of this opening range breakout uh, Python script since we're already um, running this uh, periodically to check on any new trades we want to execute. We'll just send a notification. The first notification we'll send is uh, send me an email when uh, a trade executes, right? And this is very helpful, right? Because I want to be notified if I'm not looking at my computer, I wanna be notified if a trade is made. And that way, if uh, we have a bug in our program, for instance, it's also very helpful to know if I get multiple emails saying this trade is happening over and over again and I'm losing money, that I might wanna check on that. So the email notification is handy in this case. And so uh, we just add this line here. So import SMTP lib and import SSL. And these are the libraries we're going to use to uh, connect securely to our email server, right? The second thing we're gonna need is we're going to need a password, a port, and an email login. And so what I did is I created a brand new Gmail account for this purpose. And the email address is trade notifications one at gmail.com, right? And so in my config file here, I'm going to add some configuration settings uh, for my email address, email host, and so that's the server host, email port, okay, and email password. And you're not gonna wanna show this to anyone, and I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna show you my email password here, and, but my email address that I'm gonna use is trade notifications one at gmail.com. I'll enter in a password and edit it out of the video. 
and my host is going to be the Gmail host. So smtp.gmail.com, put that in there, and the port, the default port is 465. And so we can control all, all of our email settings uh, in one place here. So now we have our libraries imported and we have our config file. Um, let's just take this context line. And so this is how we're going to connect to SSL. Uh, so this SSL context, and we'll just put this once at the very beginning. So we'll create that context there. And then we just need this with SMTP lib. So when do we want to send this message? Well, uh, we're already looping through these symbols each minute and figuring out whether we need to make a trade, right? And so we could put this email and just send an email inside this loop if a trade is made. But if we're trading like 100 symbols, I don't want to send 100 emails. So what, it, what I'd rather do is any new symbols, if we want, if we, uh, when this program runs, if it makes 50 trades, right, I'd rather aggregate all of that and combine it into a single email notification, right? So um, at the top here, let's go ahead and just have a list of messages we want to send. And then let's go ahead and force this to execute. Remember earlier today um, in the video I posted, I added this code to uh, filter out some redundant trades, but I actually want to force some trades now so that uh, this email will actually fire. So I'm just going to put this back to list orders for now. That way we'll get some actual uh, symbols here to trade and uh, some trades will fire off. And what we're going to do is when those trades fire off, we're going to, we're going to append uh, messages to this list. And, and then at the very end, we'll send one email where it uh, has one message containing all of the individual trades that are in this list. And so if I scroll down here, right, we remember um, if the symbol is not an existing order symbols, then we place a trade. And I have this commented out now because I don't wanna actually place any trades, but here's where we can uh, inject our code to uh, actually uh, to uh, build this message, right? So previously, right, we're placing orders, right, when we're printing that on the screen, and that's logging to a file. But what we want to do is have this in an email message and so what I can do is take this same string and do uh, messages.append. And let's just append this message uh, to our messages list. So placing order for symbol at limit price. Um, and we'll say closed above opening range high. And then we'll put some carriage returns. So backslash n, backslash n. And then uh, we'll just include uh, the uh, data frame uh, row uh, where this breakout occurred. And then we put a cut another couple of carriage returns in there. And so that will be our message, right? And then all we need to do is at the very end, after uh, this entire loop finishes processing um, all of the symbols, we can uh, send an email with all of our messages. So let's see if this works. I'm gonna print messages. So I'll run this, right? And I print messages at the end. And you see how we have this list here, right? Placing order for DLB, closed above, and so this is on a list, and this is a list of all the trades that we made. And let me comment that one out. That's the print statement. And let's just show the messages list. So this is a list of all the trades that would have been made uh, for this run of the opening range breakout uh, Python script, right? So we have that in a list. And so now all we need to do is get this line for uh, connecting to an email server, right? And so do that. So with SMTP lib, that's what, what we imported. Um, we're going to connect to an email server, which is our Gmail server, right? And my config file has that email host, right? And then the port is our config.email port. We already have our context, which we initialized at the top there um, as server. And we're going to do server.login. And we're going to use our email address, right? Config.email address and our email password email password, right? And so that's how we log into the server. And so now how do we send an email from the server? So there's just a, a Python SMTP lib send email, okay? And so there's a million tutorials on this because it's built into the library. And so there's just a send, send mail. And so there's just this function called uh, send mail here, right? And so all this has is, uh, so you just do server.send mail and you need to give it an email from address. And so we can just send it from ourselves to ourselves. So I'll do a from address and then the to address, right? Can be the same thing. 
and then we just need to give it a message. And our message, so we have our messages in a list now, but we wanna send our email message in a string. And so what we can do is use a join. So we'll jo join all of those messages on a carriage return like that. So I'll do a carriage return dot join. And so I'll say uh, email message equals carriage return dot join messages. And that'll take that entire list and then each of them will be combined into a single string uh, and there'll be carriage returns uh, splitting those out, right? And I'll put two carriage returns, let's try that. And then this will be, the third parameter will be my message, okay? And let's run this and see if it sends us a message. So I'm gonna run this and print it out. And let's see if it sent us a message. So I'm gonna check my email. And sure enough, uh, 432, which is now, you see I got this email notification. It says trade notifications one at gmail.com, placing order for Dolby, right? Uh, placing order for MCHI, um, MSP, and Sage. So four trades, and we got a notification with all of those trades in a single email. And so uh, what's left? You notice there's no subject here. So I'd rather my email have a subject. So let's add a subject to the message. And to do that, um, our email message, we're gonna start it out with a subject. And so I'm gonna do an F string like that. And I'm gonna say subject colon, and I'll say trade notifications for, and I'll do the current date. We already have that in a variable. And then a couple of carriage returns, right? And I'll do email address, email message plus equals. So this first line of our email message We'll have this subject colon and then a subject, and then we'll put a couple carriage returns and then put the message. And if we write it that way and run it, let's see what happens now. So I run that and then I look in my email and you'll notice now at 4.33, I have this subject trade notifications for October 30th, 2020. And I open that and I see all of my trades that happen for October 30th, so that's great. So we have these email notifications of our trades as they occur. Our opening range breakout script can run over and over again, and when there's new trades, we get an email notification, right? So I also said that we would add SMS notifications so that I could get a, a text message, message on my phone, right? So how do I send a text message? Again, there are services for this. A common one is Twilio ticker symbol TWLO, which has been a great stock for the last five years, by the way. Software as a service company for uh, cloud communications. So sends SMS and provides another service, number of services, telephony services, right? So good company. Um, so you can use their service, but also a cheap way to send SMS messages uh, for free is uh, actually there's email addresses associated with phone numbers. And so if you look email address, uh, cell provider, Okay, so there's actually these mobile email addresses. And so if you actually send an email to like a 10 digit phone number at text.att.net, for a, if, you, if the uh, phone number is on AT&T's network, this will actually send a text message. So it's just like sending an email and then it forwards it as a text message, right? And so Verizon has one, vtext.com, Sprint, T-Mobile. So most ma major carriers have that. And so what I'm going to do, I have Google Fi, okay? And so if I type Google Fi text message email address here, then it looks like you can actually send um, this email address, you can send to this email address as well. And so in this format, and I am going to copy um, my phone number to a config file. I'm not gonna show you my phone number. I get enough uh, messages as is. And so it'll be, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? right? at this address right here, and I'm gonna put that in the config file, and then all I gotta do is do server.sendmail config.sms email address, and I'm gonna send it actually from my normal email address to my config sms email address. I'll call it email sms, and then email message. So I'm gonna send two emails, one to my real email address, um, which is my Gmail address, and then one to this uh, special Google Fi email address, which I'll put in the config file right now. All right, so I added that email SMS to my config file, so I should be able to run this program again. And I have my phone here, and let's see what we get. 
Okay, it runs, should send a message. So I'll check on my email. And then you'll notice right there, it sent a text message right there. And it says uh, trade notifications, placing order uh, for DLB, so forth, right? And so you can see here is my text message notification that came in uh, with all my trades. So just like that, very easy, only a half dozen lines of code and we're able to send email notifications uh, via our Gmail, a free Gmail account and we send SMS text messages uh, to our phone. So uh, that's it for this video. That's how you add alerts and notifications. Uh, you can integrate these in a variety of places in your application. Maybe you want to scan, have a scan run for new highs or some indicator uh, every day or every five minutes and you want a notification on that. So just add that same code in other places. So right now I'm just using the notifications for uh, notifying when a trade occurs with one of our uh, automated trading scripts. So uh, that's it for this video. Uh, stay tuned for the next video and we'll keep this thing going. Thanks.